piece from the revealing word, Charles Fillmore, Unity's co-founder, says, Harmony and tranquility derived from awareness of the Christ consciousness. You know, we keep throwing this word Christ out there. It must mean something. <laughs> and I'm so glad I don't think it's anybody's last name anymore. Because I grew up thinking that. Um, what? Yes, I don't know where the H was. I guess holy. <laughs> it says, until world peace is based on the divine law of love, and this law incorporated into the pact of peace as well as into the minds of those who would sign the pact, there will be no permanent peace. And so, we've got to look at our motives, don't we? What is it I think I want? And am I going the right way towards getting them? Well, here's the funny part. I always, in the moment, think I'm doing the right thing, saying the right thing to get what I want. It's only after the fact that I find out it wasn't. <laughs> but in the moment, I always think I'm doing or saying the right thing. And that's how my forgiveness uh, process has been flowing the past few years is in the realization that so many people they're just doing what they think is the right thing to do right now to get what they want and it doesn't matter how insane it appears how it, it's like oh I just want what I want yeah I, I just want comfort cookies clearly are the answer <laughs> well cookies multiple times you know, clearly not the answer, and robbing a bakery is worse. <laughs> you know, I, I've got to have cookies, I must go and rob this bakery. And that's, you know, and where does it lead to? I want what I want. And so the hedonism and the narcissism comes in and says, well, the universe has to give it to me. Years ago when I was quitting smoking, I, I had a fondness for the Haagen-Dazs strawberry cheesecake ice cream. And I was quitting smoking, so I was entitled. And you know what? There, I couldn't find any. I could not find any of this on Ninth Avenue. I lived in the city at the time. Ninth Avenue, every store was out of it. And I was starting to get a little belligerent with the with the shop owners. It's like, I don't understand. You don't understand. I quit smoking. <laughs> and finally, I found it about ten blocks away, and I bought four of them just to make sure I can get through the day. Uh, <laughs> now, in the 12 steps, there is a wonderful, wonderful saying that says, and acceptance is the answer to all my problems today. <coughs> and acceptance. When I am disturbed, it is because I find some person place, thing, or situation, some fact of my life, unacceptable to me. And I can find no serenity until I accept that person, place, thing, or situation as being exactly the way it is supposed to be at this moment. But how ridiculous this <laughs> <are. laughs> What nut wrote that? <laughs> I remember the first time I read that, and it made perfect sense to me. And I found such relief. It didn't mean that I had accepted everything, but there was a path to peace. It was offering me peace, and it was logical. It was very simple. It wasn't easy, but it was very simple. Until I accept that person, place, thing, or situation as being exactly the way it is supposed to be at this moment. And you've heard my story about how I came to do what I call making my amends to my mother. And it was just after Christmas, 1996. I went home to see my mother and I knew in that period of time that my life was perfect. I had grown into someone that I didn't know it was possible to be at that point. And so I sat my mother down and I told her 
she no longer had to apologize for my youth. <coughs> because look at me. Look at who I am. And I couldn't possibly be this if that had been one bit different. Mm -hmm. I had come to accept that everything had played out to get me here. And here was good. If here's not good, then I'm going to keep blaming my past. I'm going to keep trying to change the past and make the past different. But if here is good, then I could come to terms with, if that had been any different, I couldn't have this good. And so to begin to look at it, there is more at work and more at play than what I'm currently aware of. Now, I, I'm pretty sure we don't have to keep going through traumatic events in order to get to this perfection. Hopefully. Hopefully we don't have to keep. If, we, if we're willing to awaken right now, to know that the Christ in me is awake now, then we can have all the good of God active and present in our conscious mind now. But I, I'm going, at some point, I'm going to have to give up tr hoping or wishing that my past were different if I wish to experience peace right here, right now. I'm going to have to give up hoping or wishing for the past events to have been different in order to have peace now. My rule used to be on forgiveness, make it not have happened, I'll forgive you. Well, let me tell you something. I was running slim on forgiveness. And so, I made my past different in a different way. I didn't change a single fact. I changed the way I looked at it. I, got, I started working with God what I understood as God, I began working with prayer to show me a different past. Now that was 1996, December of 96, and I'll take my mother made her transition three weeks later. By surprise. I had no idea. I think I killed her. And, uh, I don't know. And uh, I let her off the hook. Okay, she's free to go. She was 64. We had no way of knowing that. I'm glad I got that last exchange with her. But amends, well, it's for everybody, but amends is to rethink. To make an amends in your life is to rethink the situation, to rethink yourself, to rethink those who participated. It took a couple years later for me to do it with my father. He had already transitioned several years before. It took a few years later for me to no longer wish that he had been different or that my life had been different. I met two, my two half-brothers a few years later who uh, I found out their life with him wasn't better than my life, my life without them. I, uh, I began to open my eyes to see what the universe is giving us right now is great opportunities to see differently. To wake up and look. And I'll tell you something. Any of us here today who are saying, I wish it were different. I wish it were different, but you're not willing to be different, not going to work for you. It will not work for us to sit around, I wish it were different so I didn't have to change. Because that's what we're thinking. I wish this were different so I don't have to change. I wish this were different. Well, it's, not, it's, it's different, so I have to be different. And I work on it daily. I pay attention. I watch. I listen. Some days are easy. Some days not so easy. Now I, I saw this list, and it's uh, it's twelve rewards of a uh, new life, a new thinking. It also comes from the twelve steps, but I, I thought it was worthwhile to look at here. And it says uh, twelve rewards: hope instead of desperation, faith instead of despair. Courage instead of fear. Peace of mind instead of confusion. Self-respect instead of self instead of self-contempt. Self-confidence instead of helplessness. The respect of others instead of their pity and contempt. A clean conscience instead of a sense of guilt. Real friendships instead of loneliness. A clean pattern of life instead of a purposeless existence. 
the love and understanding of our families instead of their doubts and our fears. The freedom of a happy life instead of bondage. And I'll to look at that and say, oh, there's the rewards of peace. Those are the rewards of me shifting into a God consciousness rather than a uh, peace consciousness. And, uh, and let's be, I want to be really clear with this all. A God consciousness is not sitting alone and begging God for it to be different. Or even begging God for you to be different. A shift in consciousness is to come to being. To get quiet and be. And those of you who have done this, you know the shift that takes place. You know the difference. And those of you who haven't, I encourage you to find out. I know what it's like to go into prayer and secretly want God to change it. I know even what it's like to go into prayer and say, God, tell me what to think about this. And then say, and tell me, it's da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah, tell me what to think about this and let me tell God what to tell me. <laughs> Anybody that catch yourself doing that? Yeah. Oh God, tell me how to see this and tell me it looks like da, 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 da. <laughs> God, I want to be of service and make them change and be different. <laughs> you know, it's a... What if peace meant you had to change your thinking? What if peace meant you had to let go of all of your resentments and nobody else has to? Well, it's uh, horrifying for me <laughs> if that's the case. If I have to let go of all mine, if, I have, if I'm the only one who has to let go of resentments and wishing the past were different, if I am the only one I'm okay with it because I will see everyone else in love and I will welcome everyone else into the kingdom and I because I won't see any separation between us see if I'm not mad at you if I don't need you to be different if I don't need them to be different I get to walk into the kingdom and walk and uh, say come on along I'm not afraid of you anymore come on you don't scare me let's go together come on that's the rewards of a practice like this. Let me read this. It comes from the Holy Spirit's interpretation of the New Testament, which is my favorite book. And it comes from the second chapter of Thessalonians. I don't know if I read this here recently or somewhere else. I can't remember. But it says, your viewpoint is everything. The way you look at the world determines the world that you see. Therefore, it is time for you to look carefully at the way you look at the world. It is time to realize that you are the maker of all that you see. Which is a difficult concept to take in. But if you pay attention, you'll realize, oh, I'm telling myself that's what's happening. I'm telling myself. They're not telling me. They're just the mirror. You know, have you ever looked in the mirror and wonder why that mean mirror is telling you you're overweight. <laughs> I'm not overweight. What's wrong with that mirror? This sweater is beautiful. I know I've had it since eighth grade, but it's beautiful. <laughs> you know, it's a <laughs> disco pants. What are you talking? They're great. <laughs> Remember disco pants? <laughs> it is time to realize that you are the maker of all that you see. Peace is the guiding light that you must follow as you learn to look within the mind, for it is peace that leads you to recognition of truth. And it is lack of peace that reminds you that you're not following your way. Peace is your guide because in peace you accept the power of God as it is and you enjoy its flow. Peace is gentle gratitude. Peace is love for all that is. Listen within for the gentle guidance of peace. It is quiet but easy to hear. It leads you in ease, acceptance, and trust. 
When fear intrudes on peace, you will hear it if you are listening. There will seem to be a slight upset, a stab thrust upon your peace, and an immediate desire to deny the thought or feeling that has intruded on your peace. I tell you, the desire to deny the intrusion is fear. It is fear that you are somehow wrong and that you must hide. So, peace is your guide. Because in peace you accept the power of God as it is and you enjoy its flow. So, we came up these steps today. We all said, I'm leaving my house in the cold. I'm going to church. I'm going to unity. Because the voice of peace said, I stand a chance to remember the truth of my being if I do. So let us rejoice. Rejoice. Rejoice that we have said yes. That's all it is.